This is Still in the Clear, the podcast that distills the art and science of home distilling into easy to follow, audible nuggets for the beginning moonshiner. This information is for education and entertainment purposes only. You could even call it fiction if you want to. Home distilling may be illegal in your area. I'm your host, Cyrus, and I'm just a guy that lives in the woods and likes to make shine. So let's get into it. So I wanted to take a minute to say thanks to everyone who has been supporting the show, whether you've... uh, purchased some of the merchandise like the totally awesome vintage still in the clear cap or whether you've been getting your distilling supplies using uh, stillintheclear.com's Amazon links which uh, they Amazon pays us a little fraction as a commission and it doesn't cost you any more to do that or whether you've been sharing our podcast with your friends and family and people you know that might find it interesting or, or, you know, sharing it on your, your Facebook groups, pages or anywhere, social media. We are really starting to grow now and I appreciate all the support from you folks. So a sincere thanks and let's get to the show. All right, Shiners, today's episode is going to be about NASCAR. That's right. I'm talking about that traditionally American pastime where people race really fast cars in a big oval. I did an episode recently called A Brief History of the American Whiskey Rebellion, and the response from most of you was that you'd like me to do more of that type of episode. So today we're going to talk about the fascinating tie between the creation of NASCAR and moonshine bootleggers. I know that in, la- in the last episode, I said I would be talking about the beginner's all-grain mash, and I'm still going to, but I'm putting together a pretty cool surprise for you guys that goes along with the beginner all-grain mash episode, and it's just not quite ready, so I'm stalling for the next couple of weeks while I finish up the details for that surprise project. So for those of you who've been patiently waiting for the all-grain mash episode, I'm sorry, Uh, but the wait will be a little bit longer. Okay, let's get started. For those of you who are outside the U.S. and maybe you're unfamiliar with NASCAR, it is a racing organization called the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing. Now, the name is a bit confusing because there's absolutely nothing stock about these cars, but we'll get into why that term stock applies in just a bit. But to properly understand the humble beginnings of today's largest family fun racing organization, we have to go back in American history to Prohibition. Prohibition was a time in America when distilled alcohol was illegal for a 13-year period from 1920 to 1933. And as most people know, the fact that liquor was illegal did not at all stop liquor from being produced sold, distributed, and consumed. But under the Volstead Act, all these activities became illegal. And this created a huge black market for distilled spirits. And the veins that carried the lifeblood of this black market were the bootleggers. These were the daring folks who were responsible for the transportation of these illicit goods. And one more important factor of this era um, that contributed to moonshining and bootlegging was Henry Ford's assembly line. Ford's ability to bring the automobile to the masses through mass production and bring it at an affordable price is probably the single most important innovation for the bootlegger. Without Henry Ford, the success of bootleggers would have been severely hampered, which is kind of funny when you consider that Ford was a staunch supporter of Prohibition, and it was his innovative flathead V8 engine that outran more cops than any other engine in production. Now, the bootlegger was a special breed. To be a successful bootlegger, you had to be clever enough to avoid detection by the authorities. You had to have the cojones to run from the authorities when they did detect you, and you had to have superior tactical driving skills to avoid capture. Some of the tactics employed 
by the bootlegger were to modify their cars to be faster, to strip down the interior of the cars to hold more cargo, to modify suspensions to handle the added weight of the extra cargo, and to handle better on the roads that they traveled, all while making the car seem like a stock car right off of the assembly line to avoid drawing attention. This is where the term stock car racing comes from, and the term has stuck all these decades later, even though there's nearly nothing stock about today's stock car in NASCAR racing. Bootleggers would often gain local renown for their stories of evading capture and daring driving tactics. Soon, these bootleggers would race each other on back roads or on makeshift tracks in the middle of a field. These first races were for bragging rights only and some local gambling. But there were no fans, there were no ticket sales, there were no sponsors. But in 1933, when Prohibition was repealed and the bootleg business dwindled to a shadow of its former glory, these drivers found themselves with a lot of extra time on their hands. And although they were still they were still making runs, it was on a much smaller scale. Promoters began putting together racing expeditions for paying crowds who loved to watch the adrenaline-packed races, and it was an opportunity for them to watch a car that looked just like theirs racing around at over 100 miles an hour. Soon there were many different racing organizations across the country, but they lacked cohesion and uniformity, and the rules varied from organization to organization and even from track to track within organizations. Most tracks even began to exclude known bootleggers with their outlaw reputations in fear of a tarnished public image. Then, in 1947, a mechanic and driver named Big Bill France held a meeting on December 14th in 1947 at the Streamline Hotel in Daytona, Florida and the organization of NASCAR was conceived. Bill saw the superior driving skills of bootleggers as an asset to the organization, and NASCAR would allow former bootleggers to race. And I'm using finger quotes when I say former bootleggers, because when the first race was held on February 15th in 1948 at Daytona Beach, the winner was Red Byron, and he had been making bootleg runs earlier that week. And that's how NASCAR is connected to moonshine and has grown into a sport that can sell 400,000 tickets for a single race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Many have said that without the excitement of the superior driving skills of the bootleggers, stock car racing would have never got off the ground and NASCAR, NASCAR would have never become what it is today. And I can get into much more of this kind of history, if you'd like. Uh, that is just a brief history of Moonshine and NASCAR together. I found so much information, quotes and stories about bootleg drivers winning races and all kinds of stuff. I could do more. But I hope you enjoyed this little piece of Moonshine history. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Share this episode with people you think might enjoy it. That would be much appreciated. It'll sure help our show grow. And don't forget, doing is improving. Have a good one. Talk to y'all next week.